allowing Scott to join us in just a second as he's wrapping some things up for what it means to him. Tonight's episode, we're still having some technical difficulties, if you can hear me. Can you hear anything now? In general, uh, you know, the stock market looks like it's slowly rebounding with this latest stimulus package, and you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens over the next few days. Uh, but uh, once they do lift the stay-at-home order, our uh, Cool Toys crew will be able to go outside and get a lot more action going for you as well. Uh, some other news that uh, we're still waiting on, the cam for the rat rod got delayed is apparently Crane Cams was closed due to the coronavirus outbreak and we couldn't get the cam that we wanted for it. But luckily, uh, HB Hot Rods and Hogs was able to source another cam from ISKI and hopefully we will have a cam for the hot rod by the end of this week. And there's a, <laughs> hey Art. Uh, Art, since you just jumped on, I'll give you the update as well. Uh, we're we're uh, getting the hot rod back hopefully next week. It's really just pending on the cam. And then I know you're really questioning about the beach closer closures that we're going to get into later in the episode tonight. So we'll hopefully give you an update on uh, what's going on at uh, Bolsa 16.5 so you know when you can come back down. And uh, looks like your mom's back on. <laughs> so welcome, mom. <laughs> Uh, we're having some uh, minor technical difficulties, and uh, Scott will be joining us in just a second. So, uh, yeah, just hang in there, and we'll have this thing up and running in, a, in just a few minutes. Are we still good with the sound? Yeah. Okay. We at least got the sound figured out now. So once Scott's got his microphone figured out, we'll get him back in the show. But uh, in other news with the rat rod, as we're waiting on the parts... Uh, we're still having some issues with some of the exhaust that's been going on and the tires. If you're following us on social media, the slicks that we have just need to have your mom polish them. And it looks like we're getting a couple more. So Tio is also joining. Welcome back, Tio. Uh, everyone should be forced to wear a snug, snuggly, but I think he was referencing a snuggy and motorcycle helmets in California. Yeah, the Snuggie might get a little bit warm, especially with the heat wave coming over the next week. Uh, I think we're supposed to hit the upper 80s out here at the beach on the coast this week. So the Snuggie might be a little bit warm. Uh, and the motorcycle helmet, I guess, depending on the ventilation for it, it may or may not be a good idea. Although, uh, probably have a lot less head traumas in the U.S. and uh, less concussions. But I don't think that that would be the most comfortable thing. Anyway, um, hopefully Dr. Farr joins us as well. It looks like Rob is, yeah. Reb is on. <laughs> Got you on the big screen in the other room, all right? That's uh, So welcome, Reb. Uh, Scott will be joining us in just a few minutes. And then, Tio, I wish Trump would build his wall on the Arizona-California border. Uh, well, I know he is actually working on the wall, but I don't think he's planning on walling off California just yet. Um, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that, but I, I don't know if he's got the budget to actually uh, extend that up the California coastline since we are one of the largest borders in uh, the whole country. <laughs> so I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. Um, while we're waiting on him, what other... <laughs> no. <laughs> Clean you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, as you can see, our, our backdrop is a little bit different than last week. Uh, normally, we'd have the Bruce Jones and a couple of True Speed Autosport uh, pieces in the background. But uh, Scott, once he gets back, he'll tell you a little bit about what happened with his wallpaper incident and his OCD got the best of him. And now uh, the other half of where we're sitting is covered in cabinet doors. And uh, it looks like he's about ready to join me up here. <laughs> Jay. All right. It looks like Jen has joined us as well. So, yeah. Here, all right. Yeah. So, uh, hey guys, cool toys. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, look at that. Who's on? Hey, Tia, look just for you. I got some. Uh, That's just embarrassing. I I'm glad they're out of frame on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just for you, no bunion socks. <laughs> Can't see us <laughs> discussing bunions anymore this week. Oh, so. Crazy day. Yeah. And both of us need a haircut. You got your crazy shaver, but uh, yeah, I'm uh, living the dream of COVID isolation. I'm not the governor of 
was it Minnesota that snuck out and got her hair done the other day because she's one of the leaders? Yeah. So, yeah, we're at the so, end of the I'll catch you up to where we're at. Uh, I gave him the update on the rat rod as uh, we were waiting on some technical yep. stuff. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, we briefly mentioned Very the exciting. wallpaper and why we have a different backdrop for the set, so I'm going to go ahead and let you discuss so, why that is. Well, the motion sensor had a little corner torn off of the wallpaper. It's driving me nuts. So. Rough estimate of the size of that piece of wallpaper. Oh, two inches. So we ended up. So if you ask his wife, this still that's two inches, but yeah. <laughs> but the uh, if you look at Beach Street News, you'll see the three easy steps to remove wallpaper, <laughs> which simple green 50/50 spray it on, take it out. It's a great solution to um, get wallpaper off the wall. Then you got to take everything down, and you got to fix the holes. And this guy, whoever papered this, papered right over holes they left in the wall. So curious, you weren't the one that actually hung that paper, were you? No. That stuff is probably 30 years old. In fact, the paper <laughs> from the original house was underneath it, the whole Brady Bunch polka dot All right. craziness. Um, so one thing led to another, and as long as you're peeling off that paper, whoops, it peels off paper into the kitchen. Well, then the oven, the number two and the number five didn't work, and my wife was complaining that a lot of dishes want 325. So the oven came out, which means new cabinets, or paint the cabinets. We have really, we're still on the edge of that, waiting on two more bids on the Placing the cabinets, but if you don't get the bids back before I finish the cabinets, we already know where that's going. You don't really need a cabinet, man. All you need is a bar. I got a bar. Exactly yeah. my point. <laughs> oh, sorry. She didn't know. <laughs> and I got a beer fridge right there. And so, you know, the, the uh, so on the other half of the, the uh, studio garage <laughs> is all the cabinet doors that I'm redoing, sanding down, cleaning up and painting while I'm bored out of my mind, waiting for the guys from, um, I won't tell you the company names you haven't given us bids back yet, but this is what I got crazy. One of my neighbors, our other neighbor, Rich, yep. said, try this cabinet transformation stuff. So three, three part um, Rust-Oleum thing, and I got lazy, couldn't pick that up, so I had some uh, green trim enamel which I redid the bar in the dining room while I was doing the dining room. And that stuff, I gotta give Bear some props for that because it came out glossy smooth. This stuff, you can see brush strokes and my OCD's kicking in, I wanna sand it down <laughs> again. Um, I will yeah. say that I haven't so seen the brush strokes yet. The flow ball side of the garage instead of the cool surfboard, poster, automotive racing, fun side of the garage. So this is normally where a car sits. So how's the kitchen actually doing? Oh, let's see. The new oven is May 8th. The new microwave is May 9th. Um, so right now we have no oven, no microwave. Well, you got a pizza oven. I do have a pizza oven and a gas grill outside. So we're uh, good there. And I'm sure you got a heat lamp somewhere in that popcorn machine. Oh, that's right. It broke. Yeah. Forgot yeah, about I that. haven't replaced the bulb yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we have hot popcorn for about two minutes and then it's cold. Okay. So um, anyway, so back to where we are. We're here in California for any of you that are outside of of California, and if you are on live, you can hit the chat and text. Art, I got something <laughs> just for you today, brother. Um, we have been watching every day, painfully, our governor, Gavin Newsom, give us updates, and you guys expect an update that we're gonna release like some other states, but today it's not gonna happen. And uh, it, it's just nuts, and the, the cities, just like everybody's complaining, all the governors, I should say specifically Cuomo, are complaining that um, Trump won't take leadership and just force us to do something. Why New York, why Cuomo won't stand up and force people like his brother to stay in his house instead of attacking people while he's sick? Um, I, don't, I don't understand what the problem is. So state leadership has left some of it to interpretation. So San Diego County beaches are closed, LA County beaches are closed, Orange County beaches are not, and state beaches are not, but all the parking, parking lots are closed. closed. So people are parking in my neighborhood and riding their cool new $2,000 electric bikes to the beach and three kids this morning on skateboards. And, and yeah. So now I live two and a half blocks from the beach in, in a parking lot ghetto. It's, so, yeah, it's still getting a little crowded on the sand itself just because of yeah, the and, access and to it. I'll show you some of that later. But first, we got to go back to, uh, again, Tio. <laughs> the Geo Metro crushed the low seat. And so we got a little video here. We decided to play some games and, and you know, this is social distancing. We can't go yeah, we, very far. I'm we sure. broke out the RC cars. Um, as you know, we had a couple of low C's, the mini T 2.0. Um, I bought the limited edition and we had the standard edition. And then Scott ended up getting the Traxxas, which 
Tio was kind enough to dub the Geo Metro of RC cars. And uh, we I'm actually. Sorry, brother. I like the Geo Metro right now. <laughs> as we were driving him in the street, we had a little bit of an accident. And uh, speed, on. again, if you're watching on social media, you can see the pictures of some of the. The shock tower got just exploded. One of the front shocks came apart on us. Uh, we bent one of the pistons on the rear shock. And then in addition to that, uh, there was a little bottom bracket that we had to replace yeah. as well, which we were able to find all the parts luckily. And usual- hey, Texas, if you're watching, I ordered my tires the same time you ordered all their parts. <laughs> He's got everything, I still need new tires. The fun part about replacing all these parts is I spent about roughly 120 bucks on all the parts, but at the same time I found that I could have replaced the entire car for about 140 bucks. So for 20 bucks more, I could have had an entire parts car. But yeah, I didn't find that until after the order was placed, so now I'm stuck with a lot of upgraded parts, now aluminum, which should be a lot harder for the Geo Metro to drive through. But so. since he's broke, after spending all that money on those RC cars, he came up with a very low budget jump. <laughs> that was a, I, we did build a custom jump so we could enjoy some of the uh, RC cars. And if you want to take a look at the video that we've got for him. Uh, so the video, between uh, our houses, we have a, a, a hedge with a big hole in it, and the that's the low C going through. Yeah, that's the low C going through, and that's the shock tower that exploded, and the shock on the left, and there's the bent piston for the rear shock as well. Uh, so you can see some of the carnage that the Geo Metro yeah, left in its wake. The, there you go. So, and the custom jump that you saw was also. Uh, just a box the laying around. Box, the Geo Metro was so heavy, it crushed. It actually it did crush the, the box. It did crush the box, but we were able to make use of some of that. So another reduce, reuse, recycle yeah, yeah, yeah. for the right wing tree hugger over here and uh, made some use out of it. And then the, the parts that you were looking at, I mean, you could see how bent that piston was on the rear shock. And then the canister on the front shock actually split down the middle, which instead of replacing it with a, a stock one, we went ahead and upgraded to aluminum. So that doesn't happen again. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's check in. What are they saying? Your mom says the silver hair man is here. Yeah, I know. It, it gets pretty, uh, it's the uh, sun bleach from surfing too much. Um, the, oh, so the Geo Metro from the head on accident, it uh, we broke the bead on the tire, but instead of coming to the outside like it does when you go too fast, it went to the inside and we haven't figured out how to inflate it back because the stock <laughs> tires on it are the non. Foam. They're not filled with foam, foam, so they're just glued. So that's what I've ordered is the foam filled one. So got to get some bead lockers on it. Little screws, <laughs> just like dragsters. So, but yeah, Geometro held up fine. It's a little scuffed up, but uh, nothing, no damage, still driving just fine. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although I did take out part of your hedge. That is, it took out a lot of the hedge. So, but that is part of the rules of the show. Is we're gonna, if we can break the cool toy, we're gonna break it. That's part of the rules, so that's what we're doing. And Kelly, sorry about your flowers that uh, yeah, this guy drove through. On your side. Oh. <laughs> Either way, there's petals that went everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, the, in fact, it was supposed to be slow motion iPhone video that had plenty of time, but we might have to touch it up just for the website or something. Yeah, but yeah. we'll we'll show you the better video. But so we had a special segment we added in for Art. So he wanted a surf update since he hasn't been able to get down to the beach. Yeah, and somebody had to work today. <laughs> Which, you know, some of us do have day jobs. And, yeah. You know. Well, I used to. <laughs> anyway. So. Hey guys, it's Scott for the Bolsa Chica 16.5, riding bike out to the spot. And I'll give you a little bit of a view on the way out of uh, what's going on. So, not too many people out today, a lot less crowded than yesterday, but a little bit glassy. Kind of hard to see the guys out there that far with this little camera, but uh, there's probably 20 or 30 that I've passed. Saw a couple guys parking in the fire station parking lot, which they clearly didn't know that that's a ticketing thing. But uh, they're over there and they rode skateboards with a 10 foot board. So we'll go down to 16 and a half, see what it looks like. Well, you can see from all the bicycles, there's a lot of guys here. And you probably can tell that they're appropriately spaced about 20 feet apart. So another thing we're seeing is nature coming back. You can see the signs up right there for the bird uh, 
hatching areas, so they've got them cordoned off like they're turtles in Florida. Well guys, it looks like a standard day out here on a Thursday. You're gonna be surprised at how many people are out here. As you can see, bikes at almost every pole. There's gotta be six of them over at the 16 tower. So, the parking lot might be closed, but the beach is clearly open. sure this video is playing on the live stream? I don't know. <laughs> so click on the live stream. It doesn't look like it's playing. Can't see video. Well, By the way, the beer oh, was good. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> the, the thing, the only thing I can figure is everybody that's sheltering at home that's not going to work that can ride their bike to the beach is not going. But we also, just like we talked about earlier, we've seen so many people filling up the parking lots and um, parking in our neighborhood and riding bikes and skateboarding yeah. all the way down the road. So, uh, you know, I ride that bike to uh, the beach now every day. And um, it's uh, a very interesting ride because of every day it's getting more and more crowded. And I think early on there was confusion over which beaches were closed. When they closed the parking lot, I yeah. think people thought our beaches were closed and they're not. And I shouldn't even say that. Our beaches are closed. <laughs> So you cannot park within Huntington Beach or anywhere in Orange County, and some of the <laughs> some of the cities are actually closing down These local beaches. Socks. 
So Laguna Beach closed down. Um, Trestles has been closed for quite some time. And when I say closed, like you're not allowed in the water at those beaches now. And the fear with Huntington from our latest press release was that we were going to have a mass group of people coming down to the beach like Florida did, especially with this heat wave coming yeah. next week. Yep. So, this weekend. Yeah, it's supposed to be really warm this weekend, but there's nowhere to park for them. So our beaches are technically closed unless you can get there on foot. It gives a whole new meaning to the locals only sort of mentality. Yes. So. And Seal Beach is closed too if you're looking to go to Seal Beach. They're, they close the sand down there as well. Yeah. So some places are, like Ventura County is now open to the pier, I believe, so you can yeah. actually walk up and down the pier. But they have regulations where you cannot sit on a bench, you can't lean against the railing, you can't go fishing. All you can do is That's, walk it, constant the motion. One thing that I saw today was three people sitting at one of the picnic areas that's not taped off, easily 20 feet apart. And the state parks guy writing them a ticket for uh, group you know, non-authorized activities. Because the authorized activities are outdoor activities only, being surfing, riding your bike, running or walking. The active. Active, movement. right, active movement activity. Yeah. So it specifically says no sunbathing, no picnicking, no hanging out. And these people were hanging out. And I don't know if our tickets are a thousand bucks like they are in LA County if you're surfing, but still a ticket for just hanging out yeah. 20 feet apart. You kind of wonder at what point you know, does the Kremlin become proud? So <laughs> We are seeing some limitations on what we are able to do, which is why we're stuck with the live stream and, you know, breaking yeah. our sea cars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, so one of the other things that we're seeing in the social media lately is the unemployment side. Uh, you know, some of the small business loans were coming out and there was a there was a case that I saw on social media where the employees actually got upset and were protesting the boss because with the small business loan, it allowed her to pay the payroll, but apparently they were making more money on unemployment and didn't want payroll. That doesn't surprise me in this new $2,000 a month freebie <laughs> payment from the government, which makes no sense because if everybody's got a free two grand, that means everything goes up two grand. So um, I, I don't quite get the free mentality, but that's there are so many people that want something <laughs> for free. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, the European social media reports out of Europe are that the employers are paying 50% for the people to stay home and the government's kicking in another 20. So, you know, it's a 30% pay cut. Uh, my pay cut that I'm off for a while is a little bit bigger <laughs> than that, but it, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah. You know, Tio, I wish they'd close the beaches so only we could go too. And <laughs> I, I really, my dream is that they would check IDs at the gate. Huntington Beach, come on in. Wait, wait, we got to check your cell phone number. You got a Dallas phone number, 214. Nope, you're out. So, uh, yeah, so our Malibu is already closed and Trestles have been closed and they haven't quite gone so far as to close um, Bolsa yet, yes. but again, state there is nowhere to park. State beaches are no parking, but they're still open legally. Um, and even Gavin, you know, Governor Newsom today did not address that at all. He said, we yeah. can open it more, but it's going to be a while, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's... Uh, we are seeing some protests downtown as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which was so, kind of... Interesting. Yeah, so we, there was a protest last week, another social media uh, COVID <laughs> deal. They're, they were protesting without masks in a pretty large group that they should open the beach. Beach is open. Yeah, I, but I think they just wanted the parking and some of the businesses. I mean, it's kind of questionable. I think they got lost and thought they were in San Diego County is all I think. But. Yeah, a lot of the, the protesters that are in the downtown area are probably losing a lot of revenue in their I've stores. Your own uh, Tio's technique here. Yeah. Cough and paddle out. Every time I paddle out, I take a big cup of water. <laughs> Everybody leaves. I can't water. vouch for that. I've surfed with him and seen yeah. him uh, swallow some water. Yeah, that's pretty funny. But not so much in defending his surf spot, mostly just because he. <sighs> it's a technique. It's great. <laughs> uh, but you know, some other funny stuff in in uh, the in the news. Peter Schiff was talking about one of the loopholes in the law is that a small business owner can grab the payroll loan, grab the, the business loan. And if you look at a, a restaurant, like I was looking at buying a beer bar this year and <laughs> it's it a good purchase, 800 grand. And it, let's say it did, and, and it actually did about a million a year in revenue and it made only about 50 grand. So the smart thing to do is you go get the million dollar loan, pay everything off, bankrupt the business, open up the next day. It's, you know, <laughs> Peter Schiff tweeted that out. I thought, you know, that's why I follow Peter Schiff. It's pretty, you know, he's got some pretty wild ideas about gold and Bitcoin and all this other stuff, although Bitcoin. 
investor. So um, it, it's a funny thing that you watch all this stuff on social media, these stuff that people are tweeting. There's a guy that I respect a lot. I'm not going to give you his name because he has gone so off the deep end about um, how this is such a Second Amendment and First Amendment violation and civil unrest. Is you do see some of that, I, too. I couldn't believe it. And I thought, you know, this is a guy that I respected for a long time. He's another veteran like myself, a uh, Navy pilot, in fact. Um, talked about living in his car in order to run his business. So the guy's been on the streets. He gets it. And I think, um, you know, that's something both of us take to heart is, that, you know, getting to a poverty level at that point changes your perspective on things but he has apparently gotten so rich now he's gone into I'm the opposite him, end of the spectrum yeah paranoia so social media nonsense all week um it's just been absolutely nuts so if you want to kill things in social media though <laughs> i suggest from last season the bug assault and i bought him one so i'm hoping this video works if it doesn't this is going to be really bad and uh so I'm going to say, let's yeah. play your video. Okay, let's take a look at the video. Shows up. Hey guys, we're here looking at the uh, brand new Bug Assault 3.0. Uh, Scott's been telling us that the, the Bug Assault's been an epic cool toy. He gave it his stamp of approval in the last season and been trying to get me on board with it. But personally, I've always thought it looked a lot like a kid's toy. So he uh, ended up splurging and buying one for me to play with, as well as the laser sight that you see in front of me. So what, you, what you've got in front of you is the Bug Assault 3.0 with a laser sight, and we're going to unbox this thing right now. Of course, we're using our Navy SEAL tool, the, the Gerber, <laughs> which every man should have in their garage or in their car, just in case. So let's open this thing up and take a look at it. We'll see if Scott is correct in saying that this was a cool toy and uh, see what kind of damage we can do to his uh, potato chips. So there's that. And then the laser sight's the thing that I'm the most interested in just because I really want to salt my dinner in the middle of the night. I don't want to miss. I don't want the wife getting mad at me. Although we already know she's going to be upset just by the fact that we have this in the house. Because, all right, so there's our laser sight. You can see that it is actually working. Uh, instructions are only for troubleshooting. So there's our laser sight again. You can see that the laser sight does actually work. And then they gave us these instructions, but I'm not going to spend time unfolding them because, let's face it, they're for troubleshooting when things go wrong. All right, so Bug Assault's got some kind of safety sticker on it that is telling us only use this on bugs, which of course we're only going to use this on bugs. Except for that Craig, uh, our director, had shot his wife in the face while trying to get a bug on a screen door as his wife was trying to bring him some food outside. So don't shoot your wife in the face, or if you do, don't blame us. We're telling you right now, don't shoot anybody in the face, especially your wife. All right. Let's see what we can do with this thing. Laser sight seems to be working. All we got to do is fill this thing up with some salt and let's give it a go. You know, I don't understand why Scott always said that this garage looks like it's junkyard finds. I mean, it's got everything a guy needs. I got a TV in front of me with a nice sound bar. I got the toolbox behind the camera. I got a couple of bikes behind me, a wall full of surfboards, as well as some cinnamon bread in front of me in case I get hungry as well as a beer fridge in the back, uh, just in case, you know, the cinnamon bread that Scott gave me dries out the palate a little bit too much. But uh, we're, we're using the, the Bug Assault 3.0 with our laser sight, so we need to get that thing ready in case something decides that it wants to test that cinnamon bread before we get to it. So let's go ahead and open up some of the, the salt that uh, Scott was kind enough to send over as well. And... Uh, as always, the stickers are a little bit of a pain. Yeah, this high performance salt makes it very difficult to open the thing. And somehow I wonder if it tastes any different than the regular salt, but we're going to find out shortly anyway. We flip up the door on the top of this thing and let's pour some salt in. Mm. 
not sure how far to load this thing up, but that should be enough for at least a few different shots. Give it a little shake. Make sure we turn our sight on just so we don't miss what we're shooting at. All right, and then we wait. That looks like someone's trying to steal my food. Let's see if we can get a bead on them. Ah, teach him to eat my cinnamon bread. All right, well, it looks like it kept some of our Lego invaders out from stealing my cinnamon bread, which uh, definitely makes me happy. But uh, we'll have to go back to the studio and discuss a little further before I give it a stamp of approval. 3.0, that it, it uh, did its job in keeping the flies off some of the food. And it was a blast to actually shoot with. You know, last season, Scott gave it his, his stamp of approval, saying that it was definitely a cool toy. And uh, I didn't have a chance to let my wife use it yet, so I don't know if she's gonna like it or not. But typically, she kind of shies away from any type of firearm, uh, plastic or real. Uh, and again, if you're following on social media, you would have seen the, uh, the recent posting about some firearms with a Fostec trigger added to a 223, which was just an absolute blast. So we are uh, also gun enthusiasts uh, as well. Uh, whether they're toys or real or whatever, as long as it's fun, makes noise, and we can use it to blow stuff up or destroy things, we, we absolutely love playing with them. So the bug assault was no different. It's just a slightly uh, different direction with it. The cool thing about the new bug assault, though, is that it did come with a laser sight, which was one of my favorite features of it. So here we go. What's the cool toy? Oh, there's the other bug assault right there. If you want to show it off. Oh, yeah. So I, we actually have one of the bug assaults here, which the laser sight's now gone. No, oh, lost <laughs> my laser sight. So the, the bug assault 3.0. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I do not recommend using one of these on your friends, though. Um, our director, Craig, at one point was trying to shoot a bug on a screen door and happened to hit his wife. We do not condone doing uh, unless uh, you're shooting flies or uh, targets with this. Just don't point it at people. Yeah, and I got to tell you, there might have been some liquor involved with our director, Craig, and uh, while his wife was preparing dinner inside. And the, the best part is he looked right through the screen at her and he says, honey, this isn't for you. <laughs> And she's just, that's why I got salt nasty. The other thing that we couldn't get into this week's segment was uh, walking Charlie with a drone. Oh, yes. Uh, We're going to get that done. It's been a bit on the windy side all week, so we yeah. haven't been able to take this drone out. It goes full forward that way and still flies backwards. It's like surfing in Bolsa Chica some of those days when you take the right and the drift makes you go left. Yeah, so it is coming. We will, we will uh, do it. Uh, well, let's see what our viewers have to say. Will it get rid of crabs? I don't know if you want to shoot yourself there, you check it out, <laughs> knock yourself out. But we don't you know, they do have a special comb for that and a little bit of a powder as opposed to the salt. But I guess. Whatever you want to try, man. In, uh, my issue. in your case, if you're having an issue with that, I suppose you could load it with the little powder and you know, yeah. maybe get someone to shoot you in the yeah. crabs. <laughs> I bet you get your wife to do it for you. Hey, honey, shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> Unless that wasn't the original source, yeah. In which um, case, you don't want to well, ask. <laughs> or maybe he's talking about other types of crabs. Yeah, there's oh, a lot of other crabs out yeah, there. Yeah, maybe he's going crab hunting. Crab <laughs> it is possible. No, it's not. They won't shoot big crabs. Real, you know, like eating crabs. All right, Tio. Everything gets tested on humans. Well, that's not very humane. <sighs> that's your family. <laughs> so, anyway. Galuli. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, nothing Simply Soda won't cure. Okay, so Simply Soda, <laughs> if nobody is familiar with this, I don't even know if they make this stuff anymore. When uh, when my brother and I were kids, we used to go to Glamis with our Uncle Jeff. And at the time, he had heard about uh, some you know off-brand soda that he really wanted to get to save some money. And what he was trying to buy, I think it was Shasta at the time, but he found Simply Soda instead. Yeah, it's and like generic. Uh, didn't realize that he had bought me diet simply soda, and it was 
it was more of a punishment. Anytime we did something wrong, he would threaten us to, to say that we had to go drink a Simply Soda at that point. And oh. now that has just been a painful memory of mine. But uh, oh, it was. I thought you were going to talk about <laughs> Simply Soda using it for a paint remover or something. I'm sure that's basically what was in that can. In there, so. so if you ever find Simply Soda, it works great to uh, change behavioral modification. Uh, what else do we got up there? I don't know. I think uh, Tio's after some Simply Soda. He's getting getting a little thirsty. Get the diet. It's it's yeah, epic. Get the best. <laughs> yeah, diet. Um, man, I'm just so bummed that the show didn't work out today. We tried some new new uh, setup, and then we did the software update at the last minute by accident, and I think that killed it. Yeah, I think we had a couple of minor hiccups in there that just kind of trickled down. So we apologize to the viewers, though. We thank you for hanging in there in the chat because it is always <laughs> fun. What do we get? You got soda? Yeah, I got soda. Asked me to meet him in the shed. I got some soda right here. <laughs> That's a good part about the live stream show. We don't have to drive home. So yep. he has to walk, but I'm sure he'll make it through that hole. So place. what's coming coming for oh, next you, week? You see the hole in the bush. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> Yeah, so what's so, coming for next week is the, a repeat of this week, only better. <laughs> slow motion RC footage, uh, some drone footage, hopefully walking Charlie. The dog, yeah. There's a possibility of some more rat rod footage that Dr. Farr had requested last week. Yeah. Uh, and we may actually it, have a cam in there. And actually, I don't, I'll tell you what, I'll make this easier because I don't want everybody to have to watch kind of the same thing twice. I will edit it in so that the version that goes online. You can see the videos. Um, if you want to see art, if you want to see the beach video right now, it's on beachstreetnews.com. And the uh, should be right on the news. Beaches are closed, but kind of heading or something. So I put that little segment in there already. Uh, it's only a couple minutes, but it really does show you how many people are going to the beach. And it, it sort of blows your mind when you talk about social distancing. But you've seen in the last like week um, how many people are just coming out. And I think you just cabin fever is kicking in. So, yeah. Anybody got cabin fever? Thumbs up. <laughs> Definitely. Anyone from the director. Speaking of uh, throwing out of the house, the uh, news for the area. Yeah. With cabin fever, it's uh, you know yeah. you really should check yeah, in on first, but yeah. So we friends and family, it. and I'll so let you take that one. We we lost a neighbor uh, yesterday who took his own life, um, and really good guy, young daughter. And uh, this is the sad part for me is I haven't talked to him in a month. I have talked to his wife and his daughter. Uh, Haley goes out running, and then his wife is a nurse. Um, and so I do see them. He's got a puppy, and you just the, the vibe from the, the people that I was talking to didn't feel bad. Uh, and you know, check on your neighbors. That that part I'll admit. A couple of days ago, when I was listening to the governor and, and everybody else say go check on your neighbors, they sort of scoffed at it. Um, you know, we check on each other, obviously, and we do check on the neighbor across the street every couple of days. And then the, the lady next door, we see her daily and check on her because she is a widow, a uh, widow on her own. And um, it really is important that, you know, you stay connected. We've talked about video games being a great way to stay connected, as crazy as it is. Uh, NCIS. <laughs> so, sorry, Doyle, you know, if this show is for you, is uh, I, you know what, I can't even dedicate it to it because it just was so sweet. Sorry, brother. The next one will make uh, for next him. Next one will make for him and make it better. Um, but NCIS this week, they had an old folks' home video games. So uh, they were listening to you. They saw the show. We, we, we were getting, getting some traction on getting that. Getting traction one. on it, yeah. So that was pretty funny. Yeah, no. So with with the social distancing, make sure that you are staying connected to friends and family, checking on your neighbors, and just being a good human. Yeah. So yeah. hey, bro. So online. shout out to my bro, his yeah. bro, uh, watching, guys. my brother-in-law, as well as uh, I'm pretty sure that was Uncle Jeff in there. there for a while and then... My wife got bored of me, which yeah. unfortunately I'm going to make her watch this at least two more times tomorrow. So, so yeah, after we get everything, uh, <laughs> but uh, correctly. Sorry, guys. Yeah. So not not everything is. Man, uh, I thought I had a good three minute beer break stuck in there. <laughs> I know. A total failure. That's all right. It's still cold, and that uh, about does it for us tonight. So unless there's any last-minute questions on there, STDs are also a popular topic of old. But is this true? One of the most communicable diseases in a retirement community is gonorrhea and chlamydia. Yeah. I guess if you have nothing else to do, teenagers and old people. It's yeah. It's like living in the dorms in college all over again. So, so I wonder if I, if you could draw a correlation from the invention of Viagra to the increase of chlamydia.
be a gonorrhea retirement <laughs> <laughs> It would be. I'm sure there's a study out there uh, that would uh, to show that. PhD. Let us know. Put it on our site. Let's, <laughs> let's see it. Um, Which will be interesting, too, to see virtual reality in, uh, yeah, in a nursing home, down in nursing home with Viagra and chlamydia gonorrhea. That would be like getting <laughs> there themselves. So it won't be right. Just the, no. That visual's got to go. We got to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's already there, man. There's no going back. All right. All right. Um, what else do we got? That's it. I think we're done. We killed it. It killed us. Something today was just yeah. the failure of the video. Let's just got it off off track. Um, I think yeah. Thanks for covering while we're getting the next <laughs> stuff done and uh, get everything up. Uh, it. Um, all I can say is thanks for watching Cool Toys TV. Tell your friends we'll fix it. So if they watch it online. And if you guys can come back and see it and fast forward up to the videos, you'll see the RC car jump um, and destruction of mine landing in a bush. Yeah, we should definitely put some of the outtakes on there too. Yeah, I'll get everything corrected and, and get it online by the end of tonight. So um, that, that surprisingly, I said this today to, to Craig, our director who's not here, and Kelly's filling in for him very nicely. Uh, I said to Craig, live is a pain in the ass. And it is so much harder than shooting. <laughs> Because you can't edit out mistakes, you can't edit in being late, you can't edit, I mean, all this stuff that you guys saw today, that's live. Yep. So we're out. See Thanks you guys.